Today I want to talk about my Fujifilm XS20 camera and share my experience after shooting with it for a few months. I'll go over the design, camera specs, price, my overall thoughts and who I think this camera is perfect for. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and let's dive right into the Fujifilm XS20. The first thing I want to talk about is the design. Now let's be real, while the camera specs are important, a lot of Fujifilm users really appreciate how their camera looks. Fujifilm cameras have a certain style that can inspire you to pick up the camera and start shooting. And the XS20 is no different. If I compare the XS20 to my previous Fujifilm XT30 Mark II, the XS20 definitely looks a bit more modern. It has a bigger grip, which makes it more comfortable to hold, and the unpainted dials give it a sleek, stealthy look. The shutter button also feels more modern. Despite these updates, the XS20 still has that little flash bump on top and the edges of the camera are straight, not curved. I think this mix of modern and classic design works really well together. If we look at the more recent Fujifilm X-T50, for example, in my opinion that camera looks too modern. It lost a lot of that classic vintage feel and the curved edges makes the camera feel a bit slippery. Also, the flash bump on the X-T50 doesn't seem to fit well with the rest of design. On the other hand, the X-S20 sticks with mostly straight lines, except for the grip, which is necessary to hold the camera comfortably. The grip on the X-S20 makes it a little less sleek than other Fujifilm cameras like the X-T30, X-E4 or X100 series. The body of the X-S20 is asymmetrical, so if you are a big fan of those classic rangefinder style cameras, it might take some getting used to. I was skeptical about the grip at first too, but when I held it in my hand, it felt molded to fit me perfectly. Compared to my X-T30, which was ok to hold with one hand, the X-S20 feels much more comfortable. Despite the grip, the X-S20 is still a compact camera. It's almost the same size as the Fujifilm X106. Yes, the grip makes the overall size a bit bulkier, but when you attach a lens, you won't notice it as much. To sum up the design of the X-S20, at first I wasn't sure about the few modern elements, but after seeing the X-T50 in person, I think Fujifilm did a much better job with the X-S20. It keeps the vintage look with just enough modern touches. So for me, for the design, the X-S20 gets a thumbs up. But let me know what camera design you prefer more, X-S20 or X-T50 and why. Now let's go over the specs of this camera. It has a 26 megapixel APS-C X-Trans 4 sensor and X-Processor 5 5 axis in body stabilization. It can shoot up to 6.2K at 30 frames per second and 4K at 60 frames per second. It can also shoot in open gate mode, which is a cool feature. The camera comes with a 2.3 million dot electronic viewfinder and a 3 inch rotatable touch screen. There is only one card slot, but it uses a bit bigger Fujifilm battery. These are the main specs of the XS20 camera and in my opinion it's a great combination. Regarding the 26 megapixel sensor, it's really good like on other Fujifilm cameras. If you want to capture family moments, do street photography or even take paid jobs like shooting events or studio photography, 26 megapixels is more than enough, trust me. Current sensors are really good. I've been using my Sony a7 III since 2018 and even after 6 years it still takes amazing photos. Camera companies like smartphone brands use marketing to get you to buy the newest model. But I'm not saying that 40 megapixel sensors are useless, no. They are great for specific things like landscape photography or product photography, for example, when you need to capture really fine details. But for everyday shooting, do you really need that much detail in your pictures? I don't think so. And don't forget that high megapixels mean bigger file sizes, which can be a hassle. These days people are going back to vinyl records and film photography. It's because people are used to perfect sound and perfect images now, and that leaves little room for imagination. Everything looks and sounds so clean and sterile, but when you listen to vinyl, you hear the little cracks and pops, and you start imagining how the artist might have recorded the song, maybe in an old vintage studio. It's probably not true, but those little imperfections make the experience more special. It's the same with film photography. The 
the grain and imperfections make us think about how the picture was taken. So coming back to camera sensors, I think 26 megapixels are more than enough for most people. What's really great about the Fujifilm XS20 camera is the addition of the X processor 5. This new processor brings some really useful upgrades. For example, as I mentioned, the camera can now record 4K at 60 frames per second in 10-bit color internally, and it can also shoot 6.2K open gate. If you use an external recorder, the camera can shoot in ProRes RAW or Blackmagic RAW formats. That that sounds amazing, although I've never shot raw video before, but for video shooters this is a great feature to have. And by the way, if you plan to shoot a lot of videos with the XS20, you can attach an external cooling fan to help prevent the camera from overheating. Now for photography, the X Processor 5 brings an improved autofocus system, similar to what you'd find in the more expensive X-H2S model. I've heard some people complain about autofocus on the XS20 and Fujifilm cameras in general, but I haven't had any issues. Yes, yeah, sometimes it misses focus, but that's usually because I use small focus point and move it around a lot, so I think it's more my fault than the cameras. In day-to-day -day use, the autofocus works fine for me. Also, this new processor adds a new film simulation mode called Reala Ace, which is pretty cool. Compared to the previous XS10 model, the XS20 has improved in body image stabilization. When you pair the camera with a lens that also has optical image stabilization, you can get great results shooting handheld videos or taking pictures in low light with slower shutter speed. Now let's talk about the camera dials. Fujifilm cameras are known for their dials and they make shooting a lot more fun. On the X-T30 there was a shooting mode dial, an exposure compensation dial and a shutter speed dial. I used the first two a lot, but I hardly ever use the shutter speed dial because I usually shoot in aperture priority or program mode where the camera sets the shutter speed for me. On the XS20 we now have two programmable dials. I use one for exposure compensation just like on the XT30 and the other one I used to switch to silent shooting. You can assign other functions like film simulations to the dials kind of like on the XT50 if you want to. The one dial I don't like on the XS20 is the shooting mode dial. It lets you choose between auto, program, shutter or aperture priority, manual modes and also filter, video and vlog modes. There are also four custom shooting modes where you can save your film recipes. My issue with this is that on the the XT30 there were 7 custom modes that you could switch between using the Q menu, but on the XS20 it's only 4 and you have to use the dial to switch between them. In the Q menu you can now only switch between shooting modes like manual, program or shutter aperture priority. To be honest I prefer the system on the XT30 where you could switch between 7 custom modes with different film recipes. Now I can only keep 4 at once which isn't ideal for me. At least switching between custom settings on the XS20 is faster, but it still takes a little time to get used to. The buttons on the XS20 are also slightly different from those on the XT30 Mark II, but one thing that's the same is the play button which is on the left side of the camera. Just like on the XT30, I reassigned it to the right side of the camera, so I can view images with one hand while holding the camera. As I just mentioned, the camera has a vlog mode. When you turn it on, it makes the settings on the screen simpler, so you can record vlogs more easily without spending too much time adjusting everything. It even has a background defocus setting, but unlike on some smartphones, it doesn't use the processor to blur the background. Instead, it just uses a wider aperture to give you that blurry background effect. They named it this way so people who are new to filming can easily get a nice background blur without knowing too much about cameras. The XS20 has a USB-C port, a micro HDMI port and a 3.5 headphone jack. It also has a rotatable screen which is great if you plan to film yourself. I personally like the tilt screen on the XT30 because it made it easier to shoot from the hip. If you want to shoot from the hip with the XS20 in horizontal format, it's not as comfortable since the screen flips out to the side, but it's actually more comfortable for shooting in vertical format 
format, which was the opposite with the XT30. The last thing I'll mention is the battery. The XS20's grip houses the bigger NPW235 battery, which almost doubles the capacity of the smaller Fujifilm batteries. From my experience with the XT30 Mark II, I usually needed two batteries for a day of shooting, but with the XS20, one battery is almost enough. I say almost because sometimes it lasts the whole day, but other times you might be running on the edge of that blinking red low battery icon. Overall though, the bigger battery in this camera is a big improvement and it feels like it lasts almost twice as long, which is great. Now let's talk about the price. The Fujifilm XS20 was released at the end of June 2023 and was priced at $1300 for the body only. Right now this camera is $200 cheaper than the XT50 model. The only real difference are that the XT50 comes with a 40 megapixel sensor and a smaller battery. And of course the design is a bit different. For me, since I don't need 40 megapixels, that XS20 is a better choice and it lets me save some money. Plus, since the XS20 is now a year old, you can even find it used in great conditions for an even lower price. I bought mine with the XF1855 mm lens for just 1080 euros. The guy who sold it to me barely used it, so I got a great kit for a great price. So, who do I think the Fujifilm XS20 would be great for? Well, I think hybrid shooters, people who want to take both photos and videos, will really benefit from this camera. That was the main reason I switched from the XT30 Mark II. I wanted to shoot more videos, but the XT30 Mark II didn't have in-body image stabilization. I was hoping the XT50 would be a good replacement, but I couldn't justify the much higher price, especially at launch. For me, the XS20 was a perfect alternative. Alternative. Now we could debate the design. It's not as classic as other Fujifilm cameras like the XT30, XE4, X100 or even XT50. And I mentioned at the beginning of this video that camera design is important, but come on. It can be the most important part of the camera. The overall package should be good, not just one aspect. And honestly, it's pretty easy to get used to the asymmetrical design of the XS20, especially since it comes with a bigger battery. So this camera is a great option for people who want to not only take photos, but also shoot some videos. The XS20 has awesome specs for that. It is also a cheaper alternative to the XT50 if you don't need the 40 megapixel sensor, or if you don't want to spend as much money on a compact camera for casual shooting. And again, since the XS20 is one year old, you can already find great deals on the second-hand market. Overall, I'm really happy with the Fujifilm XS20. It's compact, nice looking and packed with great features that I'll be able to use for years to come. It's not as compact as Fujifilm XE4 or XT30, but with a slight increased size, it gives you more confidence for tougher use. I've already taken this camera on trips to London and Stockholm, not that it was a tougher conditions, but I still captured some awesome images with this camera that I'll be sharing with you in the future. So there you have it, that was my experience with the Fujifilm XS20. Share what you think in the comments below, I'm interested to hear your opinions. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. If you watched this far, thank you for your time. I hope you are doing well, but for now, have a nice day and keep shooting.